So what is a queue and how do you implement it in C? That's our topic for today. So I recently did a video about stacks, one of the first data structures that you learn anytime you start a real study of data structures. And today I wanna to talk about its cousin, the queue. So quick recap, stacks were basically just a list of elements where you can only access them at one end, the top. You can push stuff onto the stack, you can pop stuff off of the stack. If this isn't making any sense, you should go watch that video and then come back. It may make today's video make more sense. But queues are also basically a list. They're a linear data structure, but instead of just accessing at one end, we access at both ends, but in a very controlled way. We have two ends, a head and a tail. We add new elements to the tail and we remove things from the head. So this is a data structure that basically works like a queue in a grocery store or really any scenario where you're waiting in line. Basically, you're adding things to the back of the list and you're taking things off the front of the list and things get serviced in a first come first serve order. Just like with stacks, we have two operations. Instead of push and pop, we have NQ and DQ. NQ is where we actually add something to the queue. DQ is when we remove something from the queue. And you're gonna find that we really use queues really everywhere in software. Anytime you have stuff arriving, this can be work, this can be network connections, whatever. Anytime you have something that is arriving that you wanna process in the order it arrived, you want a queue. And like a stack, we can implement a queue with an array or with a linked list. Today, I'm a little short on time, so I'm going to focus on the linked list implementation and we'll pick up the array-based queue in a future video. And of course, if you've never seen linked lists before and that's a little confusing, check out my linked list videos just to catch up. Again, link in the description. Also, as always, source code is available through Patreon. Check the description for more information on how to get access. But now let's jump into the code. If you saw the stacks video, this code should look familiar. To begin with, I just took that code, replaced stack with Q, and removed the code from push and pop. So now we have this empty NQ and DQ. We have our two operations, and we have main that calls those functions, but which of course won't work right now because our code doesn't do anything yet. And like before, we're working with ints just because they're simple and we could easily use doubles, floats, structs, pointers, anything we want really. But ints are quick and easy, so that's what we're going to use today. Now, the first thing I'm going to change is the definition of what we want to call a queue. Okay, with a stack, everything happens at one end. All pushing and popping ha happens at that one end at the top. So it was enough to just store a single pointer and call that our stack. But with my queue, I want to keep track of two pointers. I need to keep track of the head, and the tail, which we'll put together in another struct, and we're gonna call that struct a queue. This is basically just all the data that we're going to need to represent our queue. And I'm gonna follow the advice that I recommended to myself in my stacks video and make an initialization function that sets up our queue. In an object-oriented language, this would be in your constructor. But here, it's just a function that's going to take a pointer to our struct, that's so we can modify it. And then we're going to set both the head and the tail to null meaning that our queue starts out empty. And saving some typing, let's rename these my queues to just queue. I like that a bit better. Now in NQ, we're just going to create a new node by calling malloc. We set its value to the value we want to add to the queue and we set its next pointer to null. That's because this is going at the end of the list, so it's not going to have anything after it. Now we need to connect it to our list, so we'll check to see if we have a tail on this list. If we do, we just connect its next pointer to the new node we just created. Then we set the tail to be the new node, so it is now the new tail. Now, one last thing, if the list was empty and we just added the first element, then head is going to still be null. So let's just check to see if that's the case. And if it is, we can just set the head to point to that new node as well. So just to recap, we created a new node. If there's a tail, we connect the old tail up to this new tail. And then we make sure that the head still makes sense. And that's really it. Of course, we still need to return true if we were successful. And let's come back up and return false if malloc failed, basically just meaning that we couldn't get any more memory. Because that's really this function's only failure case. Unless, of course, someone passes in a bad pointer. Now let's look at dq. Now, anytime you're writing a function, it's useful to think about its error cases. What can I check now 
to see if this operation that was requested is even possible. Now with DQ, the main check we wanna do up front is the empty case. If the queue is empty, there's nothing we can do. I can't return an integer from an empty queue, so we're going to first check to see if the queue is empty, and if it is, we just return. After that, we're going to save a pointer to the head and grab the integer value in the head. Then we just move the current head to point to the node after it. This is the same thing we did with our stack. And then of course, if we run out of nodes, we need to make sure to let the tail know and set it to null as well. We definitely don't wanna leave our tail dangling there. And then of course, we return our saved result. Okay, so to recap, we check for an empty queue just to make sure that we can do what we're being asked to do. And then we save the head of the queue. Oh wait, I forgot to free my memory. That's not good. That would have been a memory leak if I had forgotten to do that. So now we save the result, we're going to return, and then we finally remove it from the actual list. And that looks pretty good. Let's make sure it works. Down here in main, we need to clean up some stuff, mostly just the initialization. Now let's call our init queue function. And these queues are still called S1, S2, and S3. I told you I just copied the stack code over as a starter. So that's gonna bug me, so let's change these to make them Q1, Q2, and Q3. And we initialize the last two queues. And okay, so now let's see if it works. So into the terminal we go, we compile it. Okay, nice. I'm actually pleasantly surprised I didn't mess anything up there. And we run it and it works. It's just like our stack example, except that the order is reversed. So we're getting values out in first in, first out, or FIFO order, rather than in last in, first out order, or LIFO order, which is what we got from our stack. So hopefully at this point, you can see that queues aren't really complicated. They're really not, and they're used everywhere. As I mentioned, you can build a queue with an array as well as a linked list. It's not complicated, except we do have to be a little bit careful about our array indexes and how they wrap around. This is usually using the modulus operator, but we'll talk about that in a future video. Also, I know a lot of you have been waiting for more information about the upcoming course that I'm offering in July. I'm happy to be able to tell you today that the course page is now up at the following URL. You can now sign up for the course. Space is of course limited because my time is limited. And this is going to be a hybrid video and live interactive course. Check out the link for more information. And I look forward to seeing you there. If on the other hand, you're interested in more free content, tips and tutorials, check out my other videos like these. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new videos on data structures and other topics that you care about. And until next time, everyone, I'll see you later.